right, so I like to start my interviews off with a softball question. What was your first job in the movie and TV industry? It was acting. I was, I was an actress very young. I started when I was 10 and I, had, I, I never stopped. <laughs> We're into season two of the History Transfer. You play Maggie Lee. What initially attracted you to this role? It was definitely her brain. It was definitely uh, her uh, kind of know-it-all attitude. It was her, she was first of her class. She knows everything. She's the best at everything she wants to be anyway. Uh, very compassionate, very work-driven. Uh, I really wanted her to, and I keep saying this, but I'll keep saying it again, but I, keep, I, I really wanted her to be kind of like the Hermione Granger of the ER. And so I really wanted her to talk super fast and to, you know, as soon as there's a question, she knows the answer and the walk and talks and she can multitask. And I, I like that about her and her compassion and her dedication. And yeah, that really attracted me in the script. What kind of work did you do to prepare for this? Obviously you're working in a hospital, you're, you're, you're learning these different, whether it's the lingo, the language, the body movements, the all these sorts of, uh, uh, sorts of things. What kind of did you, pre pre preparation did you do in order to start uh, starting this? Well, we were really lucky because we got to do some boot camps, as we call it. So, you know, even before we started the first season, we had a number of them just to learn the basics of certain, you know, manipulations and certain things that we were going to be asked to do. And and uh, when we have really big medical scenes coming up, we, we rehearse them on the weekend. So we, got, we, we have about like four hours to really prepare for them with the medical consultant, with nurses. And we get to ask all our questions and to go from, you know, the, you know, the, you have to, it's really like a dance, you know? So it's to, like, how do you coordinate the dance so that it, it looks like you're confident with the manipulation you have to do. And, you know, at the same time, given the lines that you have. so. It's really then, you know, after those, it's really nice. Like you feel, we feel very much more secure, you know, and that really helped get into the character that really helped with the confidence. And, you know, we still have them. So, you know, on the weekends when we shoot and we have really big scenes coming up, we have our boot camps. So that really, really helped. Yeah. What are some of the challenges within that adjustment that you face that you've had to overcome? Uh, like you mean medically or? All the way around, yeah, preparing medically and adapting yeah. to that style and stuff like that. Yes, ma'am. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it's it was like, you know, especially for me sometimes when I, you know, with the with the medical jargon, like having to do it super fast and have manipulation and act at the same time. <laughs> Those are like really my challenges year after year. And it, they're great. I love it. It's really I really like it. But um I think the combina the combination of, of all of them is like you know, the biggest challenge I have. Obviously, you're, within this role, you're learning so many different things, understanding it. Has it, have you grown a new appreciation for like what nurses and doctors do on a daily basis? I, I mean, I already had like a, 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 an immense admiration for them, you know, as, as we all do, but like, I feel like, yeah, maybe getting to know more on the what it takes on an emotional level for these doctors to, you know, what they go through, whether when you lose a patient, I mean, we all said that they had they, they have this thing that they do to protect themselves, but you know, they're human. And like, uh, if you lose a child, it's going to affect you and you need to overcome that in order to keep doing your job. So in that sense, I really, uh, you know, went deeper into my uh, total admiration for what they do. And it's a vocation. I mean, they dedicate their lives to saving other lives, you know, so it's, it's pretty amazing. You star opposite of Hamza there. What is it like working with him? Because it's incredible to watch him thrive in this role and then and throw in the rest of you guys to kind of bounce off of him. What is that like? Yeah, it's been amazing since day one. I mean, he's such a, not only an incredibly talented actor, but such a profound human being and someone who is who loves his craft and who loves acting and we can totally feel that and feed off that. I mean, I, I love acting as well. And so when you meet someone who, you know, is as thrilled to, to create a scene and to, and to search for the perfect or the best way to do it and like to just go deeper into how to do this and that, I mean, he's an amazing scene partner and his, you know, his uh, dedication to this role and uh, is just really inspiring and it's been really great, really great. 
We've seen your character kind of shift into season two and, and grow within that role. Is there a sign of a, a sign of a direction that you're hoping your character goes or you would like to see go? Well, we're discovering a little bit more of her background. I feel like we understand more where she's coming from and her her family, her her personal life, which we haven't really seen that much. So, you know, I think it's going to grow and hopefully it'll keep building, you know, to a better understand of who who this Mags is. And uh, I, I really like the arcs of this season, you know, like getting to be also a bit more self-assured in her choices and in, you know, how she works. So I, I love that we're seeing that this season, yeah. I, obviously you've played and you've been acting for quite a while, but what is it like being on a major network television show and watching yourself weekly? Um, it, it's great. I mean, it's, it's great. Uh, you know, it, it, it's so, it's been so rewarding to see the show thrive this way. Like it's been, you know, like we love doing it and we, you know, you, when you shoot, you don't, you never know what's going to happen after, you know, when it's got a life on its own. And so to see it do so well and to cross the border and to travel is, is incredibly rewarding. And I'm really proud of the show. I think there's, the show is very unique and, you know, like, even if it's a medical show, there's like a very unique point of view with a story that we're telling with Bashir. And so I'm really proud to be part of this. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, obviously we've seen the medical f drama kind of situation happen, but I think the the diversity and the, and the lead being who it is, it's, it's really bringing a, a breath of fresh air in a genre that we've kind of seen, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that was very attractive in the scripts, even, you know, at first, when I first read them and it's just, yeah, it's very unique. I don't, I've never seen anything like this be done and, and to follow his journey, you know, it's about time that we understand more of that journey in particular, especially in Canada. So, so it's, it's been, yeah, it's really unique and it, it stands out. All right. So my, I, I like to hit a few, few rapid fire questions here to, to kind of end the show. First off, thank you for your time, but here. All right. So favorite movie of all time. Oh my God. No, so bad. There's like a few. Um, you can name a couple name, name the ones that come to mind whenever I, you, you okay, hear that. Well, I'm a classic Lord of the Rings fan. I will always be classic. I mean, it's crazy. Even Harry Potter. Okay. I'll put them in that category. Because I'm I'm a really big fan of that. Uh, I've always loved uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, Forrest Gump is up there as well. Um, you know, uh, man, like many. Oh wait, uh, Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite too. Uh, like now, I can't think of any, but you know. Titanic is amazing. <laughs> oh, Titanic's incredible. It's like a classic, you know, and it stands the classic. test of time still these days. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm going to follow that hard question up with another hard question. So oh God. name me a director that you want to work with. <gasps> oh my God. There'd be a few. Um, I love Paul Thomas Anderson. I love what he does. I love the way that he, I love his sensibility. Uh, and I love his movies. So um, he'd be up there, um, you know, of course, Spielberg and Scorsese and, you know, um, like, yeah, like those would be pretty classic. Favorite guilty pleasure film? You know, the film that you always just watch when you, when you were all scrolling through Netflix and can't find anything to watch, what do you typically, it could be a TV show or a movie, what do you always find yourself gravitating to? Well, if I, the TV show I've, I've watched throughout my entire life is Sex and the City. So that, that would be up there. But this, the series, not, not, not the movies necessarily, but the series I've just watched way too many times. Um, Movies, I mean, I like, I mean, like I, I think Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings, I could watch, you know, over and over until death, really. So, <laughs> I'm exaggerating. but I really, I think I watch them like twice a year, like the whole thing. I, I can't get over them. I just, 
they bring me in such a great state of mind. They give me hope. 